This video is being sponsored by Minwax, offering a wide variety of wood stains, finishes, conditioners, fillers, and more for your woodworking projects. Learn more about their products at minwax.com. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. My wife had requested that I design and build an entryway table beside our front door. The Froyer has two large stained oak doors, a large window, and a chandelier overhead. The area beside the front door is rather small, measuring approximately 48 inches between the dining room column and the front wall, 16 inches deep between the wall and the door trim, and 44 inches from the floor to the light switch. As with all my projects, I produce my designs in CAD. The design starts off as a very rudimentary drawing made up of polygons. I went with a simple modern design comprised of splayed and tapered trapezoidal legs, splayed side aprons with a 1 8 inch reveal, and a front and back apron with also a 1 8 inch reveal. The top is 7 8 of an inch thick with a sizable under bevel, and the lower shelf is 5 8 of an inch thick and has an under bevel along the ends. The lower shelf is held up with a small H-shaped stretcher. Once I completed the design, I exported the sketch used to create the CAD model into a vector file. From the vector file, I'm able to produce the templates for the apron and the legs using my CNC. Now why wouldn't I just cut out the parts on my CNC? Well, I prefer using the templates because they assist me in choosing the grain pattern I want for specific parts, as opposed to guessing where those pieces will land on a milled board. For this project, I went with red oak because I had a bunch of it left over from a previous commission. It also accepts stain really well, so I can use a relatively inexpensive, readily available wood to achieve the color I want to match our foyer. Here's a great example of why I like to use templates versus just cutting out parts on the CNC. By laying out the legs with templates, I'm able to see what the grain pattern will look like once I cut out the parts. And in this case, I was looking for the straightest grain possible to run the full length of the leg. Once I have the parts roughly laid out, I go through the milling process by flattening the faces of each of the parts and then planing them down to final thickness. And for whatever reason, I just forgot to hit the record button while I was planing. However, for the tabletop, I edge jointed the mating halves for glue up. And to edge glue the tabletop, I machined biscuit slots to help with alignment during the glue up process. The legs and aprons do not require any edge joining. They just need to be properly flattened and then planed down to final thickness. That's because I'm using the templates to make exact copies on the table saw. To do that, I'm using an L-fence jig on my table saw. I line up the edge of the L-fence with the teeth on my table saw blade. The template is then attached to the workpiece with double stick tape and then rides along the edge of the L-fence. If the fence is lined up properly, the table saw blade cuts the material flush to the template. It's easy, doesn't require any edge joining on a joiner, no need for a bandsaw for rough cutting and no need for flush trimming on the router table. Now to flush the ends of the legs and aprons, I use a miter gauge to support and guide the work pieces through the table saw L fence. The side aprons and H stretcher need to be at the same splay angle as the legs so that the tabletop and the shelf will sit flat along the entirety of the apron and the stretcher. What is that angle? I don't know and truthfully, I don't care. I just place the leg flat on the table saw and bevel the angle of the table saw blade until it matches the splay angle between the side and the top of the leg. I then run the top and bottom edge of the side aprons and stretchers through the table saw. For the joinery, I'm using loose tenons cut with a domino joiner. Simply line the center of the tool up with the scribe lines, plunge, and you have mortises. I make sure to offset the center of the mortises on the legs to an additional eighth of an inch to get that eighth inch reveal between the legs, 
and the aprons and the stretchers. I profiled the edges of the tabletop and bottom shelf with a 45 degree under bevel. I've done this before on the table saw, but in this case, I decided to use a large 45 degree chamfer bit chucked up in my router table. I think this method gives me a cleaner burn free edge. I slowly raise the chamfer bit until I get the profiled edge that I'm looking for. To attach the tabletop to the aprons, I like to use wooden buttons within elongated holes. Again, I'm using the domino joiner to make those elongated holes. I then take the dry assembled table base laid on top of the tabletop and mark holes for the threaded inserts, making sure I leave enough room for wood movement. Once the holes for the threaded inserts are bored out, I like to secure the threaded inserts with a little bit of epoxy. I bore two holes along the long lower stretcher to accommodate a pair of wood screws that will attach the lower shell. In this case, I don't need to be concerned about wood movement because the screws are secured along the center of the shelf, allowing the shelf to expand from the center out. I just need to make sure that the bottom shelf has enough room to expand between the legs. For this build, I decided to do all my finishing prior to assembly. I prepped the surface by sanding with a random orbit sander starting with 120 grit and working my way up to 220 grit. I then cleaned the work pieces by vacuuming the surfaces with a shop vac, which I didn't record. I then apply Minwax's pre-stain conditioner for oil-based stains with shop towels. The pre-stain conditioner penetrates the wood grain and helps prevent streaks and blotches by evening out the absorption of the oil-based stains. This is especially necessary on soft woods such as pine, fir, alder, and aspen, but ultimately it promotes a uniform acceptance of oil-based stains in all wood species. After about five minutes, I wipe away any excess pre-stain conditioner. For the stain color, my wife chose silvered gray to add an aged look and eliminate some of the pinkish color that you often see with red oak. After thoroughly stirring, I applied the stain using a lambskin stain pad. I let the stain sit for about 5 minutes and then wiped off the excess with shop towels, making sure to go in the direction of the wood grain. The length of time before wiping determines the depth of color. I didn't want a particularly dark shade, so I felt five minutes was plenty of time. And if you feel like you don't have a deep enough color, you can always apply a second or third coat of stain. I allowed the stain to dry approximately 24 hours before applying the top coat. I decided to use Minwax's Wipe On Poly. A wiping poly is probably one of the easiest finishes to apply. I simply pour some onto a paper towel and rub it into the wood. I like to apply thin coats so that I don't form streaks or pooling, but wipe on finishes are really forgiving. You can sand in between coats after about three hours of drying and apply another coat. So if you do form streaks, pooling, or an unlevel finish, just lightly sand, vacuum the surface, and then reapply. Also, oil-based polys will amber over time, adding a warm look to your hand rub finish. Keep in mind that wipe on poly is a very thin product. So I like to double, sometimes triple the number of coats I apply. And right before I apply the final coat, I go over everything with 4-aught steel wool to get a super smooth finish. For this piece, I applied a total of 5 coats. I let the final coat of finish cure for 24 hours and then started final assembly. I first started by gluing up the H stretcher and the short apron to one of the legs. I've been using these 3D printed domino glue nozzles designed by Steve at Extreme Woodworker. They really do speed up the glue application process. I then attach the other leg to the short side assembly and hold everything together with a pair of trigger clamps. To clamp the splayed legs, I use some angled clamping calls attached with blue painter's tape and CA glue. These temporarily applied clamping calls ensure I get good even clamping pressure in line with the aprons and along the stretcher, and they can be easily removed after the glue has cured. Here you can see that the applied clamps hold the base assembly together without slipping off. 
Finally, I attach the lower shelf with a pair of wood screws. And then place the base assembly on top of the tabletop attached with washer head machine screws and wooden buttons. The table fit perfectly between the foyer wall and the door. The tall 36 inch height made it functional as a resting place for mail, car keys, phones, light table decorations, and to write notes. My wife was very pleased with the table. She wanted a simple design that addressed a functional need and was neutral enough to be dressed up for various functions, like a greeting table for a bridal shower. Thanks for watching.